What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord, but we're here on One Rental at a Time because Mike needs his go-away time, but I'm here with my good buddy, Dion from Dion Talk. How's it going, man? Howdy. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. I think it's great that Mike goes and spends some time with his daughter because one day I'll care enough to do that with my kids, <laughs> but not today. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, and mine are all still home, so I have no choice. So it's uh, it's kind of how it goes. Um, but uh, we wanted to talk about today, which which was one of the things that you know we've seen more and more of it. You know, kind of coming coming on to onto YouTube. You know, is all these people? Um, we won't say what generation they are that believe that they have an opinion that matters. Um, and and so one of the challenging things in getting into anything is, and when you're trying to learn something, is understanding who you should be listening to. You know, who is it that I exactly should be listening to? Why, what is the criteria that I should be using to find out if this is somebody valuable to listen to? Because frankly speaking, there's a lot of people on YouTube and in our lives that you should not talk to about things, especially things that are things that they're too afraid to try or, or did it or did it wrong. So I wanted to kind of cover with you today, because I think this would help everybody that watches it. How do you decide? whether or not you're going to listen to somebody or solicit advice from them or, or quite frankly, even continue down the path with that, with that person um, when you have kind of an idea of how you want to do something that you want to do. And you're just in that kind of that learning phase. How do you set that criteria for who you're going to learn from? A lot of people talk about the, the quote, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time around. I, I edit this a little by saying you become the average of the five channels you watch the most. Yeah. So we have multiple info sources, especially if you're talking about something you're trying to accomplish, right? If, if you want to invest in stocks, if you want to grow a business, if you want to invest in real estate, if you want to be better at parenting, if we, whatever you're looking at, I think people often go to the wrong source for information. And Millennial Mike would like the way that I'm about to put this. I would never ask a girl for dating advice. <laughs> Right. It's, it's, mm -hmm. and I mean, there are some girls who've dated a lot of girls. Maybe I would ask that girl, but not an average girl who's the, the target audience. Mm -hmm. So most people think when I'm going to invest in real estate or in stocks, I'm going to go to somebody who's invested in real estate or stocks or works in the industry. And who's the, the closest person most people know, right? We can't all just jump on YouTube, find a Zuber and say, Hey, let's go hang out for the weekend. Sure. But most of us have a family member, a relative, a, co a previous coworker, or a friend who's a lender or who's a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. and we think they work in the industry. They're my source of information. And let me tell you how bad this can be. Mm. I have a, a friend, because most people say, well, only talk with a realtor if they're an investor. So I have a, an actual friend who has 30 rentals. He retired. At, uh, I think it was 55 when he did it. He was a real estate agent for years, he had 19 agents working for him. Mm. So I thought, this guy would be a great mentor. Of course. I'll go to him. He's got he's got the rentals. He's, he's successfully done what I wanted to. He didn't use the strategy I was going to. He didn't have the resources or goals that I did. And he had never invested the way I planned on in the asset class I was going to. He had cherry-picked deals that walked through the door, purchased them for cash over decades to get the 30. He'd never used a mortgage. He'd never invested in a small multifamily. So he was using things like cap rate on a duplex. The deals he had me making offers on would have bankrupted me if I got them. So luckily, those first couple of offers before I, because here's what matters. You have to educate yourself. Absolutely. Take it on yourself to go, okay, because you date the agent, you marry the property. I wanted to do the research before I did the marriage. And I looked at the deals he was having me offer on and I thought, okay, I don't think I can rely on his suggestions. I used him as an agent. I purchased two duplexes through him, ones that I found, I vetted. I learned the market on and kind of had to convince him why I was buying them because he thought they were terrible. He would never buy the ones that I bought. And I still have both of them and they're doing great. So sure. your agent may or may not be a good place to, to get advice from, but are they investing in what you do? Let's say that, and that somebody wants to invest in stocks and you have a friend, so get it this way. They purchased Amazon and they purchased Facebook and then they held them for the last 15 years because they were a stock picker. Now they come to you today and they say, hey, here's the two stocks, just random two stocks that, that are almost valueless today. And he says, put every penny you have into those two stocks. Don't invest in anything else. Like I'll take empty out your retirement accounts and invest in these two stocks. Would you do it? 
Would the average person just grab on because they had two lucky calls 15 years ago? Same thing with somebody who's successful in real estate. Find the person who's doing what you want to do. See if they're they're So my example is I invest in a high cost of living area and I buy small multifamily properties and it works great. And I've got a friend who invests in Ohio. She buys single family and it works better than small multifamily in her market. So just because my strategy worked for me, that wouldn't say take exactly what I did and use it in your market. You have to figure out the, the tactics that I used and then figure out which strategy is going to work in your market because each one's different because real estate's local. Do you think it matters? So I think it's, I mean, I think that's exactly right. But do you think it matters the, um, I guess the activity, the amount of activity that you're listening to, right? You know, one of the things that, you know, I love about, you know, Christian and what he's doing and, and Millennial Mike about what he's doing is volume. Like they're, they're doing transactions. Um, do you think that that weighs in at all on, on kind of, of who you're selecting to kind of, you know, I guess, uh, follow more closely. So I, I think there's a chronology to investing and uh -huh. there's, there's a, 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 it's very easy to start comparing someone's year five or 10 to your year one. Sure. Sure. Right? So, so it, you want to find somebody whose end goal is the same. If you want to own multifamily and you want to own uh -huh. lots and lots of units, right? You, you follow Christian, but when you're listening to him associate with what he's doing now, right? Don't associate that with what you should do now. Of course. You, Christian, of course. you go, okay. How did you get started? Right. You you don't you don't look at real estate investing. And and again, I'll use myself as an example. I like to use myself as the punching bag and not somebody else. I absolutely wouldn't say save up half a million dollars, buy a duplex, and self-fund a birth that you might not refinance at the end. Right. Sure. So I'm retired and money doesn't matter. Play. I uh would look at how I started, right? Yes. Two years of saving two years of renting out a house and living in an apartment to get tax return that showed rental income so I could buy a duplex because I had a bad debt to income ratio. That's the starting position that I like to talk about more than the, here's the stupid things I could do now because these would be stupid if I was starting out. I'm sure. not in phase. I'm past stabilization phase. I'm just in, I have to learn how to spend money now phase. That is not how you start investing. So there, yeah, you, you want to filter who you watch to make sure that you're looking at the things that they're doing that can apply to what you want to do now. Their long-term goals can align with yours, right? I've I've watched a ton of your content because while I was investing and, and running a company and raising three kids, I wasn't doing very many projects. I would hire handymen for everything. Uh -huh. I'm retired now and I kind of have enjoyed doing a couple other things. I'm not going to do more. I wanted to learn how to tile the thing. I tiled one for my brother. Like that was a fun experiment. It's over. And if you're starting out, sometimes you might want to do some of those things yourself. Maybe you don't have a schedule as busy as mine was, and maybe you're more handy than I was, right? I was I was uh, truck driving, law enforcement, military. That That's not carpentry work. That's not finished work. I'm still not finished work. I can show you a door that's not even done right now. <laughs> so yeah, the, the information source on who you're, who you're watching, look for the I want to say kind of cherry pick. And, and it's why I say if, if somebody wants to self-manage a large portfolio and do their flips and rehabs and burrs themselves, I go, here's the lumberjack landlord. You want to invest at a distance. Here's millennial Mike. You want multifamily. Here's Christian and Cody. Uh -huh. If you want, um, you know, if you want to reach financial freedom, one of the things I really like about one rental at a time is all the different millionaires. Are any two strategies the same? Nope. Right, right. Everyone is coming from a different angle. So you you watch what you can and you figure out who you 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 Absolutely. orient with the most and, and watch their content. But you really have to be careful uh that the crash bros can filter in. Sure. Right. Because I don't think that the algorithm has disassociated real estate crash with real estate investing. Right. Real estate crash gets a lot of views because it gives people excuses not to take action. Uh -huh. Real estate investing gets views because people want to take action. So if you're watching one, I think the algorithm is going to pop up both until you hide enough. Uh, and I won't name any because we're on Zuber's channel, but there's channels that pop up in my feed that I maybe watched at one time, interacted with, basically had to leave a few comments on to, to say, how much money are you costing me? Or a super chat one time when you were on. And I said, how many... 
how many times can you call a crash in a row and be wrong before people stop watching your content? <laughs> they didn't answer my super chat. It was very, very frustrating. It was very rude. I always answer super chats. <laughs> Me too. Even the rude one. I answer the rude one. Because those are half the fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. So as you know, so I think the things that we establish are obviously you want to be following people that are doing what you want to do. I think obviously you're trying to make sure that it's somebody that understands and remembers what it was like when they were starting also understands the challenges of the current market, right? Because we weren't buying at seven and a half or eight. We were buying at three, but I was at one time buying at seven or eight. In fact, I even bought, but I even did a deal at 10, you know, um, and it wasn't hard money. It was actually through a bank. Um, and so I think that, you know, we're, we're looking for, we want to make sure that people are looking for that. But I think to your point on the crash bros, I think the challenging thing there is, what do what experience and knowledge do they have in order to formulate the opinion that they're 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 formulating? Um, because all I see is people that the runway ran out on their previous career, and then they realize that sensationalism works on YouTube and that let's just do that, regardless of my actual credentials to get there. Somebody that's a to your point, somebody that's a you know an old underwriter or an old mortgage broker or something like that. So they signed, they prepared paper stacks and filled in your names on those stacks of paper that by no means gives them the credentials that are needed to understand what it takes to buy a property, manage a property, find tenants, do repairs. They have no idea what that looks like. So any thoughts on kind of any others that you would say, Hey, th this is something that again, you, you need to make sure that, you're vetting and that you understand exactly what they're talking about or how they are, why they're worth listening to. So outside of your lender, your agent and outside of YouTube university, mm -hmm. friends, family, and coworkers, it, it's the, I want to say lobster bucket mentality, but maybe it's a crab bucket mentality where no crab can crawl out. Cause the other ones will try to keep them down. Okay. He wants you to succeed, be more successful than them. Uh, not nobody, but a lot of people. So a lot of the people that we know, are your biggest crash bro uh, cheerleaders, right? Okay. Don't do that. It's too risky. I have a story of somebody who failed 20 years ago, so you shouldn't invest in that. Or they didn't like the tenants, toilets, or termites. I have one tenant who said the funniest thing a tenant's ever said to me. And I've said some funny things, but this is the best one. Signing a new lease. Uh, Section 8 tenant, massive rent increase because Section 8 had gone up in the area. And she said, I'm I'm so glad there's people like you that want to be landlords because I would never want to be a landlord. Exactly. My uncle had 14 rentals and it was so much work. He had to quit his job. <laughs> Those are the people we interact with on a daily basis. Your friends and family and coworkers who have the story of somebody who had so many rentals that they got to quit. The, they got the goal that they bought the rentals for to quit their job. And it's thought of as a negative. So Agreed. I'm not saying, I, th I forget which Zuber rule it is. I think it's five. It's audit your network. Yep. I think it's either five or seven. And that doesn't mean eliminate people from your life. Right? I, I want to do a video with a friend of mine, but I think it would just be putting him on blast. So I really want to be careful doing this because he's not into anything YouTube. Uh, he's He was a mortgage underwriter. Okay. In, I believe 2006, five, six, and seven. We know what his opinion is. So his opinion is the world is going to end. Never buy anything. Sure. So in the last few years, we're the same age. We were in the Marines together. We've been friends for decades, right? Uh, he wants to, every now and then he says, oh, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd probably like to buy a couple of rentals. I think his, his wife is from Colombia. She went to Colombia, bought an apartment, all cash, because it's a very different market there. Right. And I keep telling him, well, why don't you buy rentals here? You've seen, you know, like, we worked together the last decade. Like, he worked at the school with me off and on and ran some other companies too. And uh, you've seen it. 10 years and now I never have to work again. And he goes, oh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. When rates come down or when prices come down, those, those are the two things that come up over and over. He won't buy until those two things happen. And I'm like, you were the mortgage underwriter. You've worked in the industry. And so we don't talk real estate. We don't talk finances. We don't talk anything because I know it's it would just become a debate. And he's my close friend. So I'm going to say this because I love him. Never argue with fools. At a distance, people can't tell you apart. True story. 
Any other closing thoughts that you have on this side? I mean, I mean, I think that, you know, the way that I look at it is, is, you know, other people that I follow like yourself. And I think that, you know, the, the one mistake that people make is, you know, like all due respect to all the big boys, right? Like the Cardones and guys like that. You're not buying like that. You're not buying like that. I mean, maybe you want to try and buy like that. But the reason that Ken McElroy is so successful now is because he sowed the seeds 40 years ago. 40 years ago. So the guy is an uber success now, but largely speaking, who is going to do it that way now? <clears throat> exactly. What, what, so when you listen to Cardone, mm -hmm. his, his advice has escalated mm -hmm. with his progress. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't have 16 units, don't even talk. To, uh, if it doesn't have 32 units, don't even talk. Well, what did he start with? A single family house. Yeah, exactly he did yeah. and and if you if you look at somebody like me it's like i've been investing for 10 years i've got this many rentals that produce this much money i was able to retire the natural response is i would love to be in that position mm -hmm. but what did it take to do that it, it took those first five years that suck Absolutely. but that's the, the that's the i think the not advice the information i try to share the most is what were those years like because that's where the struggle is and where most people quit or don't even get started and the, the last thing when it comes to advice is, and I, I talked about this last night, my live stream, it was my, my fourth number rule of four, number fourth rule of retiring. You're the one doing this. Yes. You're, you're the one, whether it's retiring, buying the rental, buying the stocks, investing, picking your allocations, whatever you're doing. Yes. We bounce things off of people, but don't let someone else's opinion be the thing that makes you have to work another five or 10 years than you would have had to. Yeah, totally agree. There are things that I missed because I listened to somebody else. You know, just that simple. The best story that I will ever have about somebody listening to somebody else is my grandpa in the 50s was had the choice between two different stocks. One was a company called Telefile and the other company was a little tiny company called IBM. And he looked at the two and he got in a circle of friends and they were all like, I just think the telephile is it. I think telephile has, he's like, I really think, but I, but I think IBM has merit, like the big, these big systems. And I think that has merit. Nope, no telephile, no Delphi telephile. So what does he do? He executes and he gets out there and he goes to all of the local brokers and makes sure to get an allotment from them of telephile stock. Well, there is a reason why no one knows my name and that I had to work and that my mom had to work and that everybody in the family had to work. And it's because he made that one brilliant decision to buy Telefile and not IBM. And so again, that was kind of, you know, group think. And where did that get him? You know, if he had just been convicted. And so for me, conviction comes a whole lot easier. Nope. My actual research and work and due diligence and follow through and understanding will beat your feelings every single time because I've actually put something into it and it's not something on a whim. So before you consider somebody's whim or somebody's lack of experience, consider and trust yourself. There's nothing, trust yourself in talking to others, talking to Dion's, talking to, to millennial mics and remote investing, but talking to Dion about kind of the lazy approach of things. Um, and that puts you in a position where you now better understand from somebody that's played the game, exactly what it's like, you know, exactly what it's like. Dion, any closing thoughts? You you remind me of even the positive examples we have. My friend with the 30 rentals, my brother has 10 paid off rentals and retired at 50. And when I started buying rentals, he actually, and this is a familial term of love in my circle, mm -hmm. called me a moron <laughs> because he had never purchased a, a property with a mortgage. Sure. I thought me doing that was a huge mistake. It was all going to blow up in my face. Things like your rates are going to go through the roof, not right. understanding fixed rate debt. The bank's going to call the loan, not understanding a 30-year note. All of the things that a successful person who's in the same investing asset type that I'm in telling me that I was stupid. Until about year six, <laughs> when the net worth uh, competition started to happen subconsciously and the cash flow was two or three times, uh, then all of a sudden it was... That's interesting. How'd you do that? I always, I always had faith in you. I knew you knew what you're doing. Like it was this sliding scale of support came back in there. 
So be the example that makes people understand that you you can do your own research and you've got this. Uh, I like to find those people in my life and then offer to go to a really expensive dinner that I know they can't afford. Nice. <laughs> I just I just take my brother on trips yes, all, exactly. all over the all over the world and 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 I introduce him as the richer one. <laughs> Yes. They're like, yeah. I, I, I can't stay there. Oh no, we're staying there. I'm not staying in the place that you can afford. I don't want to stay there. What are you well, we've me? had that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just, I don't want to eat there. I want to eat somewhere nice. And so I'll just pay. That's fine. But Dion, we're going to really find you, my friend. Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And Mike, we hope you're having an absolutely fantastic trip away with family. Uh, Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, 1130 a.m. Eastern times on Sundays. And Dion at 4 p.m. Pacific on Tuesdays. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, Steve. Yeah.